So Animal Crossing New Horizons is kind of a big deal. The first main entry in seven years of Nintendo's Life Sim series has exceeded fan expectations and then some on the path to becoming a social media sensation and yet another blockbuster hit for the Nintendo Switch. Also helps that it's basically the perfect game for when so much of the world is stuck at home waiting out a pandemic. I've seen so many Discord groups set up channels to invite people to their islands, or swap turnip prices, or offer villagers of theirs who are thinking of moving. I've even picked up on all the memes and inside jokes just from being around them. But despite New Horizons becoming such a phenomenon that shows little sign of slowing down even two months in, all I've really been able to do is sit on the sidelines and watch. For whatever reason, I haven't managed to talk myself into taking the plunge and starting my own Desert Island getaway. To be honest, the series has never really clicked with me. And not for lack of trying. I rented the original on the GameCube once back when I was in middle school, and I actually own a copy of Wild World on the DS that I played for a month until my interest slowly fell off. And then later on, I couldn't bring myself to go back to what was undoubtedly a neglected mess of a town whose residents undoubtedly wanted to give me a piece of their minds. Well, I'm not the type to just leave it at, it's just not my kind of thing. Let's take a closer look at why I haven't been able to get into Animal Crossing. Maybe this will help anyone else that also hasn't clicked with to understand why. If I had to describe it in one word, the premise of Animal Crossing has always been cozy. You take the role of a boy or girl of ambiguous age who has just moved out on your own to a quaint little town in the countryside, or in New Horizons, a newly founded town on a desert island, populated by anthropomorphic animals of all sizes and shapes. You go about your day interacting with your fellow villagers and getting to know them better, while also partaking in the local shops, building and decorating your house, collecting ever-increasing lists of bugs and fish, paying off debts to a certain penny-pinching tanuki, it's all very quaint and comforting, like a more peaceful and laid-back version of the constant trials and stress that await us every day in real life, with just enough fantastical elements from the town's non-human populace to keep things feeling different and interesting. As the series' overwhelming success has shown, there's something appealing there. And yet, I think for me it hits this awkward midpoint where it's not quite fantastical enough. One big reason why I get into video games is they let me experience all these strange and impossible things I'd never get to do in real life. Give me a game where I can step into the shoes of a ragtag party of adventurers tasked with saving the world, or explore the depths of an unfamiliar alien world while gaining more and more new powers and slowly mastering the landscape, or command a small band of soldiers that grows into an elite fighting force whose mere presence turns the tides of battle. Sure, Animal Crossing does still diverge from real life in meaningful ways, and the whole joke about how owning a house and being free of debt is fantasy for millennials like me is low-hanging fruit at this point. Compared to so many other games and series where I can really immerse myself in something different, living out life in a village of animal people almost feels mundane somehow. To be blunt, real life hasn't always been the greatest for me. I think that's a big reason why I get so invested in video games that are so detached from the real world. It lets me escape from the stress and anxiety and overall lack of satisfaction, at least for a while. Yet Animal Crossing is similar enough to real life that, in a way, instead of being an escape from the troubles of the real world, it ends up being a reminder of everything I'm behind the curve on. And it's a feeling strong enough that, even though I haven't actually played the games myself since Wild World, just seeing other people get so involved and interacting with them on a daily basis still brings up some of the same feelings I'd want to take a break from every now and then. I know, heavy stuff, but this kind of thing can really dig its claws deep into things you'd never expect it to. Another major facet of Animal Crossing is how open its progression is. Aside from optional goals like pay off your debts so you can add new rooms to your house or fill out every wing of the museum, there's no specific line of do this, then this, then this to finish the game. That lack of a single line of progress to an endpoint is one of the series' biggest draws. There's always more to do, more items to collect and find creative uses for. It's kind of like Minecraft in that regard. And what do you know, New Horizons actually does borrow a few pages from Minecraft with some of its new features, including an extensive system for crafting items and eventually even the ability to terraform your island's landscape to your liking for all kinds of creative town layouts. With that kind of freedom comes limitless potential. 
And yet, in some ironic twist, games like this get so open-ended that it paralyzes me. The lack of a direction to focus on, and the fact that there are so many different directions to choose from, makes it nigh impossible for me to pick just one or two. I see the upsides of many, if not all of them, from the start, and it leads to my mind getting pulled in every direction all at once. The best way I can describe it is that, for whatever reason, my mind takes, you could go do that thing, and twists it into, you need to do that thing or else you might miss something important. What if I splurge on this fancy new piece of furniture in the shop today, only for that wallpaper I've been waiting for weeks to show up tomorrow when I can't afford it? I could settle for selling my turnips now for 180 bells, but what if somewhere ends up selling them for 500 bells tomorrow? Or what if nowhere does, and this 180 is the best I'll get before they spoil? Or the classic, I want to decorate my new second floor with this theme, but I'm missing this one item I absolutely need to tie the room together. How am I supposed to finish my beach-themed room without a seashell lamp? How can I call my game room a game room without a pool table? Sure, it sounds silly, but for someone like me who has run-ins with perfectionism, that feeling that something I've made isn't as good as it could be wreaks havoc with my peace of mind. Enough that the mere idea of embracing it all over again in New Horizons stops me in my tracks. And this is a game I still don't even own. One of the most under-the-radar things Animal Crossing does so well is help players establish a routine. Each new day brings new items in the shop, new resources to harvest, a new money rock to track down, and new topics on your villagers' minds, some of which involve tasks or favors themselves. Combined with occasional in-game events or festivals, and it gets to where there's always something to look forward to, which can really help in times like these. And since the games are designed to encourage taking things slowly and building up progress on your objectives over time, you never have to play for hours on end just to feel like you've accomplished something. Because as long as you commit to going through your routine each day, your town will start to grow and flourish. And it's really satisfying to watch that growth happen, as many fans can attest to. It's a very different feeling from an epic story-driven adventure, which gives it an appeal all its own. And yet, what trips me up is, of all things, the need to commit to that routine. I can only handle my to-do list getting so big at a time, or else I get overwhelmed and bogged down by the sheer number of tasks. And I already have a lot to get done each day. Video projects to make progress on, long-term plans to organize, typical real-life stuff like prepping meals and going on grocery runs, there are even other video games I already play on a close-to-daily basis. I'm going to keep practicing and improving in Smash, for one, maintaining a balance while also ensuring I accomplish enough each day to keep the ball rolling, much less without letting ailments both physical and otherwise shackle me down. It's already difficult. Adding yet another game that asks me to check in every day for at least an hour, whether Animal Crossing or something else, risks reaching the point of overwhelming me. And that's actually happened before. And then the aforementioned perfectionist streak kicks in and it starts to feel like even the smallest tasks are something I need to get done or else I'll fall further and further behind. And forget about jumping in now when everyone else has had a two month head start. No matter how much I were to remind myself I'd get to where they are eventually, anything I'd manage to do would still feel inadequate next to the islands of everyone I know. That feeling of not being able to measure up is something else I try to escape from in video games if at all possible and here I'd only just run smack dab into it. This all combines to take an experience meant to be relaxing and even meditative and twist it into something stressful. And the weight of that stress starts to hang over everything, to where I can't even enjoy myself until everything that quote quote needs to be done is taken care of. It's something that happens to me in a lot of situations, and based on both past experience with the series and with what I'm seeing now from interacting with people playing New Horizons, getting back in would only make the feeling worse. As you've probably noticed by now, none of these issues are actually the fault of Animal Crossing itself. Sure, New Horizons does have its flaws. The menus are clunky and often require more extra steps than necessary. Crafting is frustratingly slow going and requires you jump through hoops to make more complicated stuff. You can't tell how much durability a tool has left so you don't know when you need to repair it. But overall, the reason I can't seem to get into the series is more because of me than any inherent problems with the games themselves. I can't get fully invested in the premise because it feels a little too close to home. 
I get struck with decision paralysis because the open-ended structure stretches me thin and makes it hard for me to pick something and focus on it. I get too easily overwhelmed by the daily routines asked of me because I already have so much else going on, and feeling like I'm falling behind my peers stresses me out. My mental makeup takes a franchise that's supposed to be easygoing and instead turns Animal Crossing into something that I can't enjoy in the way so many others can. Could that change eventually? Maybe. Who knows? But for now, I think I just have to sit this one out. As much as it may suck to not be part of what everyone else is doing. Enjoy your island lives, everyone. I'll keep watch over things on the mainland. So yeah, those are the actually pretty deep reasons behind why I think I can't get into this. If you haven't been able to either and haven't been able to pinpoint exactly why, maybe this video might have helped. Even if it's not my kind of thing, it's still nice to see New Horizons doing so well. And nice to see the fans' long wait for a new game pay off. If you've made it this far, how do you feel about this little divergence from my usual content? Normally I lean more into analysis and concept creation, but if you enjoyed this, I could see myself tapping more into video essay type stuff like this occasionally. And if you are interested, can you do me a solid and subscribe and click the little notification bell so you know when more videos are coming? Helps out both of us. Special thanks to these people here for helping make this video happen. Shout out to my patrons for helping keep me afloat in trying times like these. Seriously guys, thank you. Until next time, well, let's just see how things play out.